Hey there, Tom here from The Run Testers with the first in a new series of monthly videos that we're going to be doing. This video series is called The Monthly Roundup and it's an opportunity for us to talk about all of the kit that we've tested over the past month that we really like that we haven't had an opportunity to do in a video. Normally we cover shoes, headphones, watches uh, and we don't tend to get an opportunity to do things like running accessories, caps, very often until we actually do a roundup video. So this video is an opportunity for us to talk about the, the various accessories and bits of kit that we've tried and liked over the past month, just to give you a bit of a roundup of what we rate at the moment. So these are all new items that we've, we've just started testing over the past few weeks, and we'll each be going into depth about the items that we've picked. So let's jump in to the monthly roundup. So the first thing I want to flag up that I've enjoyed testing this month uh, are the Bombas Performance Running Crew Socks. Uh, and obviously starts with the fact I really like the design. This, they're really jazzy. <laughs> There's lots of um, kind of interesting designs going on. Uh, these these kind of patterned ones in like blue and red and this purple one. And there are some kind of more general uh, kind of normal colors for those who don't want to go quite so garish with their socks. But yeah, I really like them because they're a little bit thicker than a lot of running socks, which obviously some people won't like. If you're in very hot countries, these might run slightly warm, but I've actually found they've breathed really well. I've run on some kind of 20 degree days. It hasn't been very warm here, but in general, I like a slightly thicker, more padded, comfortable running sock. Um, and these fit the bill really well and they have lovely designs. So yeah, tick all the boxes for me. Second thing I've been testing this month I've enjoyed is the Everdict trail running tights. So these are basically half tights. They've got like a slight compression fit, but it's not too aggressive. They're supportive rather than like really intense compression. They're basically running shorts with a running belt built in. Um, I'm a big fan of the Kip Run running belt, which is made by Decathlon as well. And these shorts basically have that belt just built in. There's a huge zip pocket on the back there. You can whack in, you know, a big water bottle in that, like even up to 500 mils. I use like 250 mils soft last generally, and this pocket swallows it up really easily. And then there's a big pocket on the front that can swallow another one, plus a little zip pocket behind, so you can keep your phone separate from all the other bits and bobs you're packing into your belt. And then there's a couple of kind of smaller side pockets that will take gels, headphones, inhalers, keys, basically everything. And it's all held really nice and close against the body with these shorts. They're a really strong option for kind of long training runs. Tempted to kind of race them as well, but I'll really be testing the comfort level of them on some more runs later. I've done one or two runs of them so far, but haven't gone really, really long. So the storage is good. There's no bouncing, but I do want to test the general comfort of the shorts before I would go and race in them. They're another really good option in this high storage shorts category that I'm a really big fan of. Um, and they come in very, cheap at 20 quid which is great because you know a lot of time you can't get a running belt for 20 quid and this time you're getting shorts and a running belt for that price first up of my three picks of things that i've been enjoying testing this month then goes to this this is the precision fuel and hydration chew it's a pf30 chew it's remarkable it's tiny it weighs 33 grams and crumbed in there is 30 grams of carbs now that, after you've done an hour and a half's worth of sort of running or you're getting up to 90 minutes and beyond and you want to start getting in those kind of 30 to 60 grams of carbs per hour, I mean, this is half of that in one tiny little packet of chews. Brilliant. I mean, they take up no space. These, a couple of these in a running belt will see you, you know, through quite a lot of those kind of longer sort of training runs, you know, three or four of them and you're, you're getting into kind of those sort of longer 18 mile runs. They taste good. They come in mint and lemon. There's a, they're split into two, so you get a mint one side, lemon on the other. There's another packet which is kind of like a neutral flavour. They're just the right amount of kind of chewiness. They're a bit sort of soft, but they don't squish like some other chews I found do if you stick them in pockets over a long period of time rather than a bag. And yeah, 30 grams of carbs. If there's an easier way of getting that kind of size of carbs into your body as quickly, I've yet to find it really. Um, just really convenient, really portable. You might not want to use them when you're going all out really fast because it's, you know, the chewing, some people, the breathing, chewing, all that kind of stuff might not go together very well. But yeah, if you're running your long sort of slow, steady runs and you're looking for a way to fuel them, I totally recommend checking these out. Really, really pocket friendly and solid. And in the UK, they're £7.49 for five. Next one's a really happy find for me. I'm always looking for base layer shorts that have that holy grail, don't chafe. And you don't always have to kind of put some kind of Vaseline or something in your, in your soft bits in order to keep them you know, in good condition. These fit that bill, they're called the Crossfly Run Pro 7 inch. And they're basically, you know, a base layer trunk, 
sort of boxer that goes down a bit. They've got a nice sort of soft waistband that doesn't cut in at all. It's really, really soft, that material in the waistband. And they, you know, nice soft material, sort of feels like a sort of lycra. They've also got a little hole for you to get a little trap out when you need to, if you get caught short doing a wee in the bushes on a run. Um, there is quite a lot of seams on the shorts, but the great thing I think is that those seams don't seem to chafe at all. It keeps everything in place where you need it. And yeah, just again, just a really good set of base layer shorts I would recommend. Those in the UK are $19.99. And the final one for me, this isn't a run essential, but it's something that I've really been enjoying using, partly because I use it to film our videos on the run testers, and I've kind of fallen in love in taking this device on my adventures for running. If there's a better way to capture video of your runs, I'm yet to find it, and it is this. This is the InstaGo 2. It is a tiny, tiny action cam that it's basically almost the size of an AirPods case. Weighs really very little, fits in a running belt, and this is the camera actually in a charging case that boosts the battery. This charging case also attaches to a stick nice and easily. When you open it up, you can control the angle of shoot as well. On your stick, you can extend it so you can get run shots. You can do pieces to camera if you're trying to record an adventure and some of your thoughts on the way. The other thing though, which is great, is that this camera actually comes out. That's the actual camera. It's tiny. On that camera, you're gonna get 30 minutes of shoot time in the standard video mode. It drops a bit if you go up into the pro mode. Whack it back in the case and it charges and you'll get 150 minutes of runtime, which is a lot if you're recording an adventure. I've taken it on some big long ultras and it's shot the whole thing uh, if I've you know, used it sparingly. The other thing, it's Wi-Fi connected so you can preview what's going on on the camera. You'll shoot on your phone. It shoots 4K. It's waterproof to four meters. There's hand-free operation. There's built-in stabilization. It does slow-mos and hyperlapse. And yeah, it actually, the other thing on it is the mic is really good. It captures really solid audio as well without actually having another mic, even in windy conditions. So yeah, if you've seen any of the videos that I've been shooting on the run testers, a lot of those shoe shots and stuff have been captured with this camera. It's £249.99 in the UK, the starting price. More if you go up, you know, in terms of the kit that you can add on. But if you're looking for something to shoot your running adventures, this is one that I think is well worth looking at. My first pick for kit that I've tested over the past month that I've really liked is the Belega Blister Resist Quarter Running Sock. Now this is a sock, as you can probably guess by the name, that is designed for blister prevention. And if you've ever tried blister resistant socks before, they tend to be a little bit thicker. They tend to add a lot more padding around the foot to protect it. Uh, and also sort of pad out the shoe a bit as well. And it's something that I've always liked uh, when it comes to running socks. I actually used to wear, run in uh, snowboarding socks when I first started running to stop me getting blisters, long before I'd ever tried any actual um, specific kit for running. Um, but these are just very comfortable socks. I mean, they don't think they're much to look at. They're not the most exciting design, but I'm not really into designs. I'm Nick and Mike, I leave it to them to get them the really nice, colourful socks. I just want functional socks that feel comfortable and do the job. Um, so I've been running in these a few times now, um, and it has been quite warm recently where I live. And even though they're quite thick, they do feel quite comfortable and breathable. So um, it's a nice bonus if you you look at these and think they're just going to be really, really hot. They work, they're not that hot for me. I think they're, I found them to be completely fine. I also really like socks that have a bit of extra padding in them because I wear a lot of different pairs of running shoes. Sometimes there's a little bit of extra space in them. Sometimes there's not. Um, but when there is a little bit of extra space, it's nice to have a bit more padding so your foot really fills that shoe um, and helps you to stop get blisters. Um, so yeah, I think there's not much to say about these. They're just very solid, good, comfortable socks. It's a combination of natural fibers and synthetics. Uh, and the idea behind that is that you get the sort of softer feel from the natural fibers and then the synthetics add the performance level stuff like breathability and sweat wicking properties. Um, and I've, I've just found it does that. Both of those work very well. It's a very comfy sock and I've never had any issues with my feet getting hot or sweaty in this um, Belega running sock. My next pick this month is the Seiski Blaze Cap. Now, if you have ever watched any of our videos where I talk about caps before or ever seen me running in a video, most of the time I'm wearing a cap. The reason for that is because I don't have a lot of hair and I tend to have to wear a cap when it's sunny outside um, for protection. So I'm a big fan of caps. I have a massive range of caps. Um, but I, what I really like with the Seiski um, cap, the Blaze cap, is that it looks great as well. And I think um, if you're somebody that actually likes wearing a cap all the time and you, you tend to wear it when you're not even running, 
this is a great option because it just looks like a nice looking cap really i would I, i'm happy to wear this around the streets and i think it looks really nice i do have some running caps that don't particularly look very nice um they're very good for performance level stuff and i'll use them for races and things but i'm not going to walk down to the pub wearing um some of my less attractive caps whereas the Saisky one looks great but it's also really good at performance as well i find it very comfortable to wear um i find it um even though it has a fairly i wouldn't say thick material but it's not a really thin lightweight sort of mesh material it's a, it's more like what you'd expect from a cap that you'd wear for walking around in um but it still feels very lightweight very breathable uh, and I, yeah, I just love wearing this cap um, in on the hotter days. I tend to wear my cap backwards um, and there's a nice easy clasp at the back for adjusting the cap uh, and also opening and closing it. So other than that, not much to say about it. Just a solid cap that you can use for performance running when you want to protect your head from the sun without getting too hot, uh, but also just looks great as well. My third pick this month is the Arc'teryx Squamish hoodie. Now this is an interesting one because it's not specifically designed for running. It's actually a multi-purpose jacket which covers things like hiking, skiing, climbing, all those sorts of things, outdoor things. Um, but I, I've been using this for running um, and it's not been too cold recently. It's been quite windy. Uh, and this is an excellent jacket to wear. It's, it feels like a very thin running jacket. Uh, which is generally the only running jacket I will wear. I never wear a thick running jacket, um, but it will. It it does a great job on runs. It it feels nice and breathable. Um, I I normally wear a medium. This is a medium, and it feels like there's a nice little bit of space in it, so it's not too tight on you. It feels very comfortable. I think the thing about Arc'teryx is that it just looks great. So it's nice to have a running jacket that is a really nice looking running jacket. It is quite expensive, £130 is a lot of money for a running jacket, especially if you're on a budget. Um, but Arc'teryx stuff is really good. It's it's really well made um, and I very much enjoy wearing this out on the run. And I would say that if you compare it with some of the other Arc'teryx jackets uh, and clothes out there, it's one of the cheaper options that they've got. Um, other uh, features that it's got on it that, are not, uh, that I quite like, uh, there's a chest pocket at the front which is useful, holds We'll hold your keys, we'll hold your wallet, we'll hold your credit cards, things like that. So it's quite useful to have that. I don't like running jackets that don't have some form of pocket in them. I get very annoyed when uh, I can't put my things in a pocket somewhere. I do wear a running belt, but it's nice to have your keys readily available if you um, are heading back to the house. Um, other than that, it has a hood on it, which um, is nicely fitted. It also has a toggle on the back so that you can tighten that up if it gets windy. And I have been using that this week because it is very windy uh, on some of the runs that I've done down on the coast this week. Um, but other than that, I think it's just a solid jacket. But the bonus of it is that it's a multi-purpose jacket, so you can use it with base layers if you're going hiking. Um, so a little bit more of an investment, but one that probably pays off if you do lots of different activities. I do a lot of hiking, um, so I like having clothes that I can use for multiple purposes, hence why a, a pocket is useful for me, because I generally have to put stuff that's readily available for when I'm out walking. Um, so yeah, I think that's just a good solid jacket that is good for a certain type of person that wants a multi-purpose jacket. So April has been quite a hectic month for me in terms of running. We had the London Landmarks at the beginning of the month and the weekend after I had Brighton Marathon. Um, since then really I've been trying to kind of relax a little bit as much as I can. We've got a massive amount of shoes to test. We obviously had the um, Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus and Edge Plus launch um, last weekend um, when they had the 5k time trial which was hard work and hard going for me but really it's about me kind of getting back out running, enjoying my runs again, getting the mileage back in my legs. I've got Edinburgh half um next month as well so there's a couple of things i wanted to pick out in terms of if i've been using over the month outside of the the shoes the watches the headphones that i'm kind of continually testing the first thing i kind of picked out is this this is the Saisky combat um t or clean combat t um it's pretty simple it's pretty basic you know normally i probably go for something a little bit more kind of eye-catching in terms of my kind of t-shirts that I run in uh, but it's just been really nice to kind of throw on uh, when I wanted to go for a run I pick this up you know it's it's ideal in terms of the conditions that we're in at the moment in terms of spring um, it's getting a little bit warmer but it's still a little bit cool um, in places and this just feels really nice to wear it's kind of recycled polyester it just sits really nicely I found um, 
no kind of real irritation uh, even when it gets a little bit sweaty as well um, and it just fits really nicely i think the Seiski stuff is you know it's very good in general um i've kind of preferred a lot more the kind of performance stuff the shorts and the tights and uh, the vests as well but actually this t-shirt although pretty basic it's actually been a really nice uh, kind of addition to um kind of my running kind of kit this month the next thing i'm going to pick out um it's not a piece of kit, but it's something that um, I do use in terms of my recovery. So I am a kind of big fan of using massage guns. I think you really have to know how to use them properly. And once you do, they can be effective pre or post run. Um, and I've been looking for something a little bit more portable. So I do have a, a Theragun. Um, it's not one I can feel I can really travel with. It's quite big. Um, I've been testing this out. So this is the high price Hypervolt Go 2, um, which is TSA approved, I believe. So you can kind of carry it on, carry, carry it on a, you know, on a plane. I have done um, already. I've kind of used it for when I've gone to uh, Brighton for the marathon. And it's just generally been really nice to have a portable uh, massage gun. It's pretty, pretty straightforward in terms of how it works. It works the same way as most massage guns. You've got three settings. There's like three hours battery life in here. There's two, um, arms for it as well this kind of flat one which i think gives enough pressure in terms of what i would want pre and post race and then you've got this one here which seems a little bit more aggressive in terms of you know getting into those areas um you know in terms of the sore areas that you've got on your legs but actually it's worked really nicely for me the battery life is you know is good enough for me three hours uh, the fact that i can just throw it in my bag it's pretty quiet as well in terms of operation so that's been a thing i it's been a nice kind of addition for me because i've been traveling around and probably when i go to edinburgh this is probably going to go in my bag as well so i can use it pre uh, and post the half marathon as well so those are the two things that i've kind of you know i'll pick out in terms of stuff that i've been testing and um, that i've kind of really liked using so the high price hypervolt hypervolt go to uh, massage gun and then the Seiski uh, clean combat tea uh, as well Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes as well as headphones and watches out at the moment. We've also got a coffee account set up now so if you want to buy us a coffee you can go into the caption below and uh, there's a link in there to take you through to the coffee page that we've set up. So thanks a lot for watching. See you soon.